Pat, thank you so much for taking the time to do this today, man. How you feeling heading into the games? My pleasure, guys. Um, I mean, feeling good. You know, this. I feel like this kind of time out, uh, everybody's training is pretty much peaking, and you're all looking forward to that taper. So I'd be lying if I said I felt amazing, but uh, we're going to get there in the next week. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, last year, you kind of hit, I'm not going to lie, you kind of hid a, a little groin injury from us. Uh, my question is, what are you hiding from us this time? <laughs> uh, you know, I, nothing serious. Good. I think everybody's got little bumps and bruises and that comes with the territory, right? But uh, fortunately, you know, knock on wood, nothing that's uh, really going to hold me back this year. So, you know, looking forward to competing a full weekend and, and doing the whole thing again. It's fun looking at the games right now just because it's been you know a couple years since we've had uh, a full field of 40 kind of complete the full test and uh, it feels new again almost right so I think it's been, I've been around for a little while now and it's it's fun to have it feel fresh and new again and, and be really looking forward to it like it's the first time we were talking about it before we came on here but you are a new father uh, how has that changed your perspective on everything <laughs> Uh, it's interesting. I guess I haven't thought about it much, but, um, it's, it's busy. It's, it's another thing to do. You know, it's another weird place to put your energy. I'm really fortunate right now that, um, you know, my partner, Michelle is really doing most of the heavy lifting as far as that's concerned right now. And, and the deal is sort of once the games is done, then I'm tagging in for a big shift. Uh, but I think it's, it's one of those things that I've, I've been doing for a long time. You know, I, I did my school at the same time as training and I, I've always, I've been working and I've always been kind of, I've enjoyed keeping multiple balls in the air at once and, uh, and having more than one thing on the go. And I think it kind of keeps me honest and keeps me focused and working hard because there's, there's no time to waste. You've got to be a little bit uh, more effective and, and diligent and deliberate with your time. So mm-hmm. I, I think it, I try to see it like that. Like, yeah, there's another thing to do and, and it takes some time and energy, but I, you, I try to compartmentalize as much as I can. And when I, I set my gym time aside, I try to focus and work hard there. And then when I'm home, I, I try not to think about it too much and, and spend that time with family. But like I said, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate. Michelle has been a superhero for the meantime. Uh, and I, I, I owe a big thank you on the back end of this. <laughs> Well, you talked about multiple balls in the air. There is a Matt Fraser shaped ball that is no longer in the air this year for the competition. And I'm curious to what extent, how has that painted this season in a different light as far as your approach and just, I mean, the, the mindset, I guess. Uh, I think, you know, I bet you, if you ask most people, they'd give you the same answer, but the, I don't think it changes much in terms of preparation. You can only do what you can do in terms of preparation. And I think, most, if not all of us at this point, have a pretty good understanding of what we need to do, where our holes are. Um, and you try to do those things and attack them with all the energy you have, right? So whether or not someone else is in the field, it, it doesn't really affect that a lot. Yeah, I think it's hard to ignore the noise and, you know, the talking heads who will say, hey, you know, who's the next guy and this and that. Like there is a, a large vacancy in the field for sure. There's a big power vacuum and it's going to get filled. So, yeah, I mean, I think everyone's looking around wondering who the next guy is, but I I don't think you can let it affect your preparation that much because, you know, the biggest mistake you could do, in my opinion, is to try to be Matt Fraser now. Um, You know, you have to be the athlete that you are and do the things that you need to do to be as prepared as you can be. So people trying to step directly in those shoes, uh, it's that's a very tall order. Um, and the reality of it is, you know, I'm not Matt Fraser, nor is anybody else that's going to be in the field. So the competition is going to look different. Uh, and I think that you just need to compete with the tools you have and, and sharpen the tools you have and then, and then give it your best crack. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I'd be lying if I said I was not very aware of you know what's going on and the chatter that goes on. But uh, I think you have to try your best to let it not affect you and, and maintain your focus where it needs to be right do one event at a time do the things you need to do um try not to let points sail by but we've been doing it for a long time again i haven't been doing it live in a little a hot minute here so i think it'll be fun to get back doing that and and feel that stimulus again so i think it's going to be a really exciting year in the men's field what is matt fraser's lasting impact on not only the sport but just the men's field um, it's a good question. I think 
Ah, man, I, I don't think that there's a lot of people who had as full, a, a complete package like Matt did. So I think that what he's going to leave an impression of is, here's the thing. So what's going to happen probably this year is someone's going to win and it's going to look by comparison, somewhat disappointing to the way <laughs> compared to the way that Matt won. Um, so I think that there's, you know, it, it, he was phenomenal. Right. And I think that it, it, that's going to be his legacy is, is, how how surely he won every competition uh with no faults and no missteps most of the time right so uh i think he he has shown that that's possible and you know has given athletes permission to be great at everything um but that's sort of where the game has been elevated to so he, he's he's moved the bar to a place that is is very very high so uh we'll see and i think he's gonna still gonna stick around and, and play a small role in his own way and the field that still exists, you know, he's working with some of the younger athletes and, um, you know, starting a supplement company and stuff like that. So, you know, he'll be around and I think his, his legacy is not going to disappear and he's going to continue to play an active role. But yeah, I think that it's going to be an interesting year, like a, nothing against all the male athletes, including myself, but you know, the way that he did it was something that we had not seen. Uh, and I think that we, I hope we don't see again for a little while. <laughs> Unless it's oh. you. Well, yeah, exactly. Unless it's me, then I'm okay with it, right? That's a good point. Well, you do know a few of the things that you are going to see uh, at the games this year. There have been some event announcements, uh, I believe four in total, uh, a sprint, um, a triplet, a four-round triplet, um, some sort of swim thing, and then Max Greenfield's announcement of, of the down-and-back chipper. What are, you, what are your thoughts around some of the events that you've heard so far? Um, I've, I've enjoyed the way they've announced them. I'm always someone who doesn't want all the information early. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I can prepare as well as the next guy, but it, I think part of the fun of the games is, is learning it on the fly or, or, you know, trying to develop strategies very quickly and having to experiment and adapt quickly. So I kind of hope that they pump the brakes on that. We still got like a week and a bit to go until we get there. And at this rate, we're going to have all the information before we show up. But um, every announcement they've made has had details withheld, right? So uh, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, yeah, sure, a workout with rope climbs and skier against sandbag could look very differently depending on what the weight of the bag is, what the distance of the carry is, what the what the ropes are legless or short ropes or whatever. Like, there's a lot of details missing there that significantly affect the way that you would approach or prepare for that workout. So every workout that's been announced has a little bit of that, that mystery still wrapped in it. So I like that. I think it's kind of fun. We get a little bit of an idea and it generates some buzz and excitement, but it doesn't give away the whole, the whole thing. Right. So it's cool. I think it's fun having some of those implements like the pig back, you know, the paddle. Um, those are the things that we show up to the games for. Like that's some mm -hmm. of the fun stuff that you can't replicate at your gym as well. And um, you know, those are the things that, uh, that, you know, when I first went to the games and still every year, that's what you look forward to. Like that's yeah. what, what makes the games a different competition than every other one. So, mm -hmm. uh, I'm happy to see that so far we're front end heavy on those kind of things. And, uh, it looks like it'll be a lot of fun. You're telling me the guy that won chaos doesn't want to know any details for everyone else. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> keep it, keep it hidden away. Like I'll, I'll deal with it as it comes, but, uh, tell, tell us, tell us everything on the fly. You mentioned that you haven't competed in person uh, in a while. What's it going to be like for you, you know, stepping out on that competition floor with a packed house inside the Coliseum or in the North Park and finally being back in front of fans? Uh, it's interesting. I, I actually, I think there's going to be a little bit of a, a rust element that is present, but I'm glad that the first little bits, you know, it's a big mass start event. I think you, you can, um, you don't feel that same kind of pressure as if your first event was like in the Coliseum under the lights. Uh, so I, I'm hopeful that there's a little bit of time to kind of grease the wheels and ease back into it, but I'm excited to do it. Uh, I miss live competition. That's my favorite part of competing and, and doing CrossFit in general is, is being able to compete next to somebody in the lane over and, and the different elements that are involved in live competition. So I'm super jealous of everyone that got to compete in the live semifinal. Uh, and I'm, you know, excited to finally get my chance back on the competition floor. It's been, it'll be like almost 18 months, I think, between live competitions for me, which is a long time. So uh, I'm aware of that. And I think I got to be a little careful maybe with how I deal with those butterflies and where I put that energy. But um, I'm, I'm really excited to have the chance again to do it. And I think it's going to be a blast. And it's, I'm not alone. I, there's a lot of people in the same boat as me. So I think it's, you know, it's something that everybody's really looking forward to. Yeah. Uh, the 
I would say your career has gone through two very different kind of sections, I think, so far. The, the, early, the first couple of years, um, tremendous su success, multiple podiums, and it felt like even despite a few nicks and bumps in the road, you could find a way back. And the last couple of years, it felt like just a couple of things weren't breaking your way, and there was, there was opportunities lost and, and a little bit of fluctuation. And I'm curious, like, where, what is the Pat Vellner that walks into the 2021 games uh, know now and has learned from those last couple of years that, you know, maybe might have not been around back, back when you were racking up podiums? I don't know. I think maybe we're, we're approaching the Renaissance. So I, I like to think I'm coming in with a, a little bit more experience and some more tools. And I think I've been consistently getting better. The field mm -hmm. is just better. Right. And I think that, you know, it's getting harder and harder to come back from mistakes. And I think you got to be a little bit cleaner and a little bit better uh, at executing the little things. So um, I, the reality is I'm just going to go and try to do the things that I know I can do well. I think maybe in those couple of years, I was feeling a different sort of pressure and trying to compete a different way than what had made me successful in the past. Um, and I think you've got to learn to ride that line a little bit uh, in the way you attack certain things. But you know, I think that you learn a little bit from what works and what doesn't and, and, you know, dealing with injuries and coming back and those sorts of things. Uh, I think you learn a lot about what, where your tolerance is at and where your abilities are. And, um, I, I'm just, I'm excited to go do it again and just see like, I, the reality is like, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly how different it's going to be and exactly what's different that I'm bringing compared to everybody else, but I'm confident in my skills and my ability. And, and I think that, uh, I'll be able to give anybody a good run for the money. Speaking of learning, what did you learn about yourself and where your fitness is right now after coming away with the first place finish at the Atlas Games? Uh, it's a good confidence boost. I think anytime you're in a competition with an invisible leaderboard like that, it's really stressful. Yeah. Um, I think even I get some sort of a, I don't know what, a, a twisted pleasure from looking at a leaderboard, whether it's good or bad and knowing where I stand and what I need to do. Uh, it just sort of helps me orient myself and set goals. So when you're blind for so many, and particularly with our time zone, you know, I'd be done three events before the first leaderboard populated. I'm halfway through the competition. And um, so I think it's a good confidence boost to see that, you know, when you're blind like that and you put your best foot forward, it, things go well. Yeah. Um, and I don't think, I think I typically will perform better next to other athletes with some of that live competition, competition atmosphere and, and that additional information out there. And a lot of people do as well, but, I think it's a good confidence boost. And I think the way that the events were, I had some good breaks for me and I had some things that I was a little concerned about, but I executed very well. So I think overall, I was really happy with how the competition went. Um, there was only maybe a couple little things I would have, I would have taken back or tried to do differently. So overall, I think that's a pretty good showing. And, you know, I think seeing where you stack up with five other or four other online competitions, um, I think it's a, it's a cool measuring stick. So uh, I was really happy with how it went. And I think that that's what you want going into the games is like that little bit of a confidence boost, knowing where you're at and, and seeing where you are relative to the field, because at the end of the day, that's, that's who you're measured against. And when it's been a long time and a lot of online stuff, it sort of feels like you get lost in the void a little bit sometimes and, you, and you're not sure where everybody is or where you are. So um, anytime you get a good checkpoint, it's good. And it's even better when it goes well. And, you know, now you're one of the seasoned vets of, of the sport and we're, we're in that final push for the games. I'm always curious what, without giving away too much, uh, what does the final prep look like for you in terms of procedure and, and throttling back as, as we've talked about before, the three-year reigning Wadapalooza champ? <laughs> That's right. I got it. I get a bonus here for free. Um, <laughs> I think what it, what it mostly looks like is it's, I'm sure it's the same for everybody. You know, you, you, you put those really hard few weeks in of prep um, leading into maybe, you know, coming into this weekend. And then the last week, maybe week and a half, the volume starts to come down a little bit. You try to keep the, the engines lit, keep the intensity high when you can, but um, your body can only tolerate so much volume. And, you know, I'm 31 now, so I, I'm trying to be a little more careful with that, but uh, it, that's really the the trick is just getting ready to that getting rounding the corner from that peak training and getting into that taper phase and getting the body back feeling good and ready to rock dealing with any of those little niggling injuries or little little aches and pains and just trying to make sure you feel like the best version of yourself that you can going in um but 
keeping that, keeping the fires lit, like keeping the little bits of intensity up that you can, cause you don't want to go in flat, um, get to the competition, the venues as early as you can. You know, I think I'm going to leave for Madison next week and then try to get a few good training days in there. And most of it's just soft touches at that point, like any information they've given, it's, it's probably smart for you to try to do a little bit of work on those things. And I mean, if you're, if you're going to get given a hint, you might as well run with it. So I think most people are going to be doing a lot of that, uh, trying to give themselves any advantage that they can. Uh, and that's mostly what will dictate training probably for the next week is what sort of information we have and what we can do with that or how creative we can get with that. Um, and then slowly reducing the impact a little bit. What's it like having someone like Michelle Latondra in your corner who has been through that process? How does she help you manage that as you head to Madison? She's always been great. I think she's really, we've been working together a long time. So I think she's really good at knowing when to tell me I'm just being a little whiner and I need to <laughs> just do what she says, uh, which is, it happens a lot. And, uh, and knowing when, you know, to throttle back and when we got to pay attention to what your body's saying. And um, so she's been very good on those tapers and those, those periodization phases of, of training. So I have a lot of trust. I've been working with her a long time and I think that um, our communication is super open and that's a big key component is uh, I'm not afraid to tell her when things are hurting or sore and I, I feel like I need to change something. And equally, she's not afraid to tell me if sometimes she's like, you're being dramatic or, or if this is a little more real, right? So um, it's good. I think that that sort of relationship comes with time and comes with experience, but we're really able to read each other well and uh, that goes a long way when it comes to these kinds of relationships because yeah, I mean, when, when training is peaked, emotions are high and competitions bring out the worst emotions in people. So it's, it can be a tough, tough waters to navigate. So it's nice to have someone that you really trust and knows you well. I was going to, my last question, and this is a little, you know, presumptive, I guess. If you have your first kid, you, some, you get married and you win the CrossFit games, is that the greatest year ever? <laughs> I like, do, do you just sign off and say, you know what, that's the, that's the peak of humanity. Maybe we'll have to, I'll have to get back to you in like a few weeks. Um, it's going to be busy though. I know post games, that's where we got to regroup quickly and, uh, we're going to get married kind of a month later, month and a half later. And we've got, we've got lots of other stuff that's cooking for after the games that I've been really pushing to the back burner and then, mm. uh, it'll get busy again real fast. So whatever happens, I'm sure I won't be able to, to just revel in it for very long. Um, life, life goes on. And so I'll be, I'll be busy before I know what's going on. Pat, there seems to but, be, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, but that would be lovely. That would be a great year, I think, objectively. <laughs> it would be hard to beat. There yeah. is this trend of athletes who are congregating in these uh, training camps and getting ready for the games in a group setting. Obviously, things that are going on in Canada have prevented people from you know, getting together in big groups and things like that. Does that appeal to you, that type of group training session? And if so, why? And if not, why not? I think it, it needs to be done in a controlled way. Like, I think it's super appealing because it's, it's training with friends, like-minded people, you know, misery loves company. It's a little bit of that. Like you, you get that push and you, um, you know, you get to do it with people and it's maybe makes training a little more fun and bearable on the day to day. Um, I've always been someone who has a pretty good intrinsic motivation and I, I'm able to push myself hard when I'm by myself. Um, and I don't really struggle a lot with that. Of course, there's days where it's easier. And I mean, like today, I, I went to Vancouver to train with Emily Rolf. And like, it's, it's been lovely. Like, it's really nice to not just be alone with your thoughts all day, every day, um, especially in my head. But I think that there's sometimes a little bit of a cost that comes with that. Uh, you know, if I'm training with a, two or three other male games athletes, at the end of the day, those are the people you have to beat. And so there can be a lot of stress that goes along with that, where every every workout that you lose to your peer, it's like, okay, well, I, you know, in three, four weeks, I need to not lose that workout to that person. Uh, how am I going to do that? And it feels like training maybe carries a lot bigger weight and you might really quickly realize that instead of training, you're actually competing every day. Uh, and that can really burn people out. And so I think there is a risk associated with that, that the coaches that run those sorts of camps should be quite aware of and probably are. Um, there are certain things that we do in training that are, are meant to be a training stimulus and they're meant to be done a certain way with a very specific goal or purpose in mind. And if you're caught competing with someone, you maybe end up losing the purpose of the piece you were doing 
and turning it into something else. And then, you know, if you do three times in a row, a super high intensity aerobic piece, and instead of doing your, you know, your zone two work or your whatever, like it, it can really just throw the training purpose around and, and, um, can cause some problems in the long term. So I think short term, those camps are great for me. I, I love to do them now and then. Um, I obviously have never really had the opportunity to do long ones, partly because Canada is too huge and we have too few athletes. <laughs> but um, it, it also, I, I'm really aware of that other side of it that I think it can kind of get ugly unintentionally if you're not careful. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy training on my own a lot of the time. And I, I if I need to commiserate with somebody you know we live in a digital age i can always facetime someone and and they're happy to chat with me with the renewed focus that is being put on the crossfit games and the efforts to you know, build this thing back up there's been a lot of talk about it needs to get professionalized more and athletes need to be, have more opportunities to make money they need to get paid more money uh are you optimistic about where this is going right now and if so why and if not why not I think it'll be interesting to see what happens this year after the games. Um, this has still been, you know, another year plagued by COVID and lockdowns and things like that, where um, it's been difficult for businesses to sponsor events and for things to happen the way that they need to for, you know, generally more money to be injected into the ecosystem. So I think that there's a lot of good things going on, but until we see what happens on the outset of this, uh, it's hard to know. I think that we might see a few of those off-season competitions continue to thrive. Things like Rogue, Dubai come back and, and provide more and even bigger earning opportunities for athletes. Um, so I think it, it's always a challenge for athletes of where you where you put um, all your chips, right? If, if the game season is going to be seven months long and um, you know the only real earning opportunity in that season is is at the games – you know, that's, that's a big journey. Um, and you know, there might be more lucrative opportunities in the off season that you have to balance that with depending on where you see yourself in that field. So it becomes a bit of a, a you know, a personal choice as to what you pursue the most. And the more of those off season opportunities or the more of those earning opportunities we can allow to exist or, or, you know, encourage to exist in the ecosystem. I think that's great for, for brands and for athletes. So, We'll see what happens. I think it'll be hopefully a slow growth. Um, we obviously, we, we were doing some really cool things with the sanctional system that was allowing a lot of financial opportunity to athletes and, and a lot of cool opportunities for brands to uh, present themselves and grow in the, in the CrossFit world. But we got hit with a hard stop with the COVID thing. And I think once that, you know, normalizes a little bit, it'll be, it'll take a little bit more slow growth again. And then hopefully we get back to a little more of just a few more of those opportunities and maybe just, yeah, generally slowly increasing the amount of, um, you know, income that's in the ecosystem and, and, you know, increasing the size of the athlete middle class, you know, making sure that, you know, the top 40 athletes can earn a reasonable living instead of the top 20 and those sorts of things I think are long-term goals. Uh, but it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the off season. And I think it's just going to take a little time as we reset from COVID. Uh, I think as much as we would love for things to just ro be a rocket ship and, yeah. and right, be perfect right away. Uh, we've got to tether ourselves to reality a little bit. Yeah. Ed, do you, do you get the sense that, um, brands are feeling bullish on the direction? Like I, um, I, I obviously is like one of the top athletes that also like, you know, carries a lot of sponsors and, you know, has, has worked around and with sponsors in the past year. Do you, do you get a sense from them at all about how they feel around the direction? Um, I haven't really, you know, it, it sort of depends. I mean, I, I work closely with Reebok and they just recently stepped away from the CrossFit contract. Right. So, um, you know, companies like that, I think everyone's looking for where they can fit in the ecosystem and, and where they can get a, a good handhold and, and exist for the long term. Um, you know, some of those things like title sponsorships don't come cheap and they don't come often. There's just like not that many of those opportunities that exist. Um, as we get more of those semifinals back to live, you know, there's more opportunities for those brands to become partners, major partners in some of the large events that are going to have high visibility. I think brands are generally optimistic. I think they're still on the back foot though. A lot of them dealing with COVID and rallying from that. And a lot of people had pivoted to more online platforms and changed their marketing plans. Uh, and I don't see them 
really quickly making a, a fast change from that as things normalize. I think it's going to be a gradual see where things are just in case there's another lockdown or another whatever. Um, they're going to want to be a little bit more flexible and fluid for a period. Um, I think people are, I think generally people want to be optimistic. Uh, I'm, I'm optimistic by nature. And I, I think that a lot of people want to see it succeed. Um, so we're all hoping for the best. And I think that, you know, it's, it's really, it's just going to be fi- figuring out where, where, every, where all the pieces fit. Uh, I think there's opportunity to be had. And I think that the ecosystem can continue to grow. You know, a lot of the emphasis that's getting put back into affiliate programs. And, um, you know, like you said, some, some increased emphasis on the sporting side of it. I think there is a lot of cool opportunity for, for brands to get involved as major partners or, or create something on their own. But um, it, it, it might just be a slow leak for a little bit. I think I, I don't see people having a lot of companies don't have a, a bunch of revenue all set aside for that probably right now, you know, after COVID people have been kind of generally struggling in business. Um, so, you know, there's probably not a lot of people that are just like have the, you know, it, it all lined up to just throw a whole bunch of money at something to make it happen really quickly. So we'll see what happens. I, I hope that a lot of those things continue to exist and, and continue to grow and more start to, you know, develop and those opportunities just continue to, um, bring more opportunity. Why is this the year that you can win the CrossFit games? Cause Matt's not there. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> um, I don't, I mean, I feel like every area there's a reasonable chance, right? I mean, everybody's got a puncher's chance, but, um, you know, I, I think that over the course of my career, I've definitely been a, a very consistent performer. And I think that there's not a lot of things that, uh, you can catch me sleeping on. So uh, I think that knowing I've beaten everybody in that field at least once live um, is uh, is a good leg up. Uh, and I don't think there's a lot of them that have beaten me live. So I think uh, it gives me all the confidence I need to show up and, and you know, uh, swing my meat around, say, for lack of a better <laughs> word. But I think that a longer competition also gives me uh, a leg up, I think, compared to some competitors. I generally tend to thrive near the end of a long competition. Um, so, you know, knowing as we're setting up for a 15-event competition, I, I'm I'm keen on that. And I think that I'm happy to see it roll on as long as it needs to for things to take shape. But, you know, that said, I, I know that I'm not the only one who thinks that. So it'll be very exciting. Final question. As a proud Canadian, I know the Montreal Canadiens are a polarizing team up there, uh, much like the New York <laughs> Yankees are down here. Are you disappointed that the Stanley Cup drought for your country has con- is continuing, or are you happy that they were not the ones to break it? Oh, I would. It doesn't matter to me who breaks it. I would like okay. to see someone break it, though. I, I would have been happy for it to be Montreal. Frankly, they're like our, our oldest club, pretty much, right? So it would have been almost poetic to have them break it. And the last um, ones who did it, but. Against they would have been in, yeah. they would have been insufferable for that's sure that's what i'm saying yeah <laughs> um but also on the flip side of that there the canadian clubs have a boy we have had a bad uh a bad time with the old hockey riots up here so i feel like <laughs> had, had that had that series gone deep or had montreal won that city would have burned <laughs> and i uh, i would have been concerned for my fellows up in montreal like michelle's living there and i would have been i would have been flying in somebody to rescue her Oh, but man. uh it's too bad i mean I'm, I'm it was it was great for them to get to the finals so i mm-hmm. think that that nobody really expected that and it was cool to see things click for them but tampa was an unstoppable force yeah, they are back, to back, for sure. back mm-hmm. to back what, what are the maple leafs going to get it right <laughs> boy there's a few clubs right now who can't figure it out like edmonton's one too uh, how do you like, get yeah got, how, you got, Connor got all the guys well and he disappeared in the playoffs yeah, like he just true. put together like an like a Gretzky esque season where he put up stupid numbers and then they couldn't get out of the first round again. Right. Like it's just, there's a few teams that have that problem right now where they're just, they're forever, forever in the first round. Like the Leafs did it again. They would, they they blew it to Montreal. Uh, they yeah. were up, they, had, they were up what three games to one, three and, then one they, yeah. they, and then they blew it. Uh, and just, yeah. And then every year, then there's like a couple of trades that happen and this is the year. And you know, um, They've got the franchise players to do it, and they just need to, to find a system that works. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard, man. It's hard. Up here. <laughs> <laughs> you, hate, you hate to see it. Oh, but I'm happy to watch all the McDavid, Drysidle, Matthews. Uh, yeah. You know, watch all the highlights. But uh, boy, yeah, when it comes to playoffs, I don't know. They can't. They can't seem to get it done yet. They'll find their groove. They're all young. 
Well, you know, and next year is going to go back to the normal, hopefully the normal schedule, normal divisions. So, yeah. you know, don't know how that's going to affect things, but uh, Pat, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Uh, really appreciate uh, you uh, being willing to talk to us. It's always a pleasure. Best of luck in Madison. I uh, hope Owen is doing well. And I hope we are we going to get to meet him in Madison. Will he be making the trip or not? He will be great. Okay. But- good. Get your vaccinations. Yep, you fully them, maybe. ready to go. Yep. And we are, we are <laughs> yeah, he'll be go. around. He'll be around. So he'll be rocking the big baby headphones and he'll be in the Coliseum. So <laughs> yeah, if you see him, say hi to Michelle and uh, and uh, definitely we, we, say hi. We will for sure. All right, Pat, thank you so much. And, and cool. again, best of luck at the games this year. See you guys soon in person. Yeah. yeah.